it's Monday, August 29th, and uh, we're leaving Denver right now. We stopped in Denver last night. We got in about like 9 p.m. or so. Grabbed the last couple supplies that we need, and now we're going through traffic and headed to the mountains. So we're going in four days early, which it's kind of concerning to me, but I wanted at least two or three days, and, and we're going in four days early because we don't have experience in what we're doing, and I want to find a good buck early, and if the area that I have picked out from e-scouting is not good, then we'll have time to back out and get somewhere else before opening day and all that stuff, so... Kind of a little extra step that most people probably wouldn't do, but from my experience, when you do what others won't do, you kill big bucks. So we're gonna do that. And honestly, it's gonna be some nice weather, it looks like. And we're gonna be camping in the back country and glass and deer, and I can't think of a better way to spend four days before opener. So We've got plenty of food and rations that we're going to take in and go in high and deep and see what we can do. Dead on. Bullseye. Cuts are on, third axis is on. Uh, I'm gonna go up here and shoot one. Well, I'll probably shoot a couple more here. But keep in mind. But probably go downhill, shoot one more downhill to make sure downhill and uphill are on. I mean, it's on, on flat ground and uphill, so that should tell me it's on. But peace of mind and preparation is always the best. Hit right where it broke, so that's good there. Got the 44 mag loaded down. Man, <laughs> might not back, be back to right here for two weeks. It's crazy. Hopefully we kill faster than that, but it's gonna be at least five days because that's how long it is to opening day. We got a long ways to go, so we're gonna take our time and not get elevation sickness. Well, nothing left but to do it. Think alike. Well, we stopped for our first break about three quarters of the way down the valley. Um, let's see, we're going somewhere between six and eight miles in. Uh, I don't know the elevation change, but it's a lot. The peak that we're going to is 13.5. There's a pass right beside it, probably 12.5. Um, I'm carrying a 60 pound pack. I weigh 180 pounds, so a third of my weight. And then Dylan weighs 150 pounds, carrying a 50 pound bag, so a third of his weight. And we're gonna take our time getting up here. stuff other people will. Yep. including a 60 pound pack to 13,500 feet. It's 
That's a lot of work. Yeah. Well, we made it to 11,000 feet, and uh, we're both definitely feeling this elevation. So we hiked till dark and started at noon. So now we're gonna eat a little something. We got the tent set up right off a stream and filtered our water. So pretty excited, but also pretty sick at the moment. I'm gonna try and relax and get some rest and get acclimated. We are 11,000 feet using the Zolio for some satellite communication. But uh, got everything packed up on the 44 mag. Bow strapped in place. And we've got another 2,500 feet to go up. It's really not far, it's just pretty much up <clears throat> to the pass that we're going to, so ready to get started for the day. All right, well, it is September 1st, day before season. We've been in Colorado for four days now. And uh, <clears throat> the first place that we packed into, we found moose and mountain goats, but no mule deer. So we packed out of there and it was a long hike in and out. And uh, we went to the next spot, pulled up here I found a glassing point that was really close to the truck. And we went and glassed last night, no mule deer, but found two big elk bulls and one of them's an absolute stud. So I think we're gonna run to town and buy an elk tag because it's not very often you see an opportunity like that in an over-the-counter area. And we're gonna go in that spot anyway to look for mule deer, so. Um, that's the plan, and we're gonna go grab some supplies, a tag, some elk calls, and make Dylan take a shower because he stinks. So, um, yeah, then we're gonna pack in tonight and hopefully get up in the morning and either find a big muley or shoot a big bull, one of the two. So, take opportunities as they come, like any bow hunter would do. So, we're gonna head to town.
day two um, about midday what we're gonna do is work our way into this remote basin um, it's got a bunch of little fields in it like this one we're camped in this is kind of swampy area and we're camped on the edge of it but um, we've been finding the deer you know higher elevation like 10 to 11 thousand feet but it seems like in this area of Colorado there's a lot of trees that high tree line doesn't stop until like 12,000 around here so when we set up camp in the dark a couple days ago there was like three or four beds right here from mule deer 
So we're gonna just work our way into the back of this remote basin. Um, that's just around the corner here. And uh, once we get to the back, we'll glass a little bit and then come time for them to come out in these little pockets and feed. We're just gonna ease through each pocket glass, ease to the next one glass, ease to the next field glass. See if we can find one. Cause when we were walking in, that's exactly what we saw that buck doing. Um, you know, you, you couldn't really glass it from up high, but when we walked up to him, he just stood there and we could have taken a shot. So we're gonna do that in that more remote basin, see if we can find some mule deer and then see what happens. I think it's gonna work. So here we go. Well, we've spent several days in Colorado and uh, worked really hard and just haven't found very many mule deer, much less bucks that were interested in shooting mature deer. So um, we decided to pull out and we are headed to Nebraska. We've got some friends that had some success opening week in Nebraska. And, I hunted there some last year and have some really good spots. I didn't end up filling a tag last year, but got on some really good opportunities. So we're gonna go check out some of those spots and see what we can find. And um, yeah, just kind of shifting gears, going with the flow, see if we can make something happen here. But uh, Colorado just didn't work out in that unit. It's kind of our first time doing it and uh, we're just rolling on. All right, we just pulled up to Nebraska and literally we pulled up to the first field and stopped. And I was getting my binocs out of my case and Dylan says, right there. And there's an absolute giant bedded like 60 yards off the road. And he just saw tines turning. And so, we're gonna go kill him. <laughs> I mean, this thing is huge. I, I mean, I don't know how much more of a story we can make out of this, but like, what a giant. We're gonna kill him. Here we go, game on.
Let's go. Oh, I said I punched him, dude. Watch him go down, watch him go down. Oh, he's down. Oh, he's down. Let's go. Let's go. Fastest hunt ever. <laughs> you got the camera on me? <sighs> Bro, we just sitter punched him. <laughs> He's out of velvet, but who cares? Bro, how old is it? <laughs> I think there's another big buck out there. Yeah. Ooh, that's a stud. That's a good deer. There's another one behind him. Yeah. I was looking at the front one. Yeah. Okay, he's down right there. Let's get our shoes. He's still rolling. <laughs> you ready? You rolling the GoPro? He's down right there. Oh my God. We did it, buddy. We did it. No. Look at the mass on this toad. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> Bro, he's a three by four. Look, Look at the at blade. This. Look at it. Oh my God. <sighs> what an absolute mondo, bro. Well, here he is. We uh, we hunted hard for a week in Colorado and uh, didn't turn up very many bucks in the high country. So we made a last minute decision with the last few days we had to run in Nebraska and things happened fast. Um, this guy was in one of the first spots that we checked based off some, some places that I hunted last year and he was bedded right up next to the road and we popped over the hill, got the wind in our favor, threw our camo on, stocked up on him and got him killed. He uh, just rubbed his velvet off, he still has pieces on, his horns are green, just absolute massive three by four. And uh, got little brow tines here and man, I couldn't be happier after a hard week of hunting. This is the hardest week we've ever had and uh, just happy to be sitting behind a good deer to start the 2022 season. So he's a stud and it's hot out, so we gotta get him worked up and taken care of, but I couldn't be happier with a Nebraska mule deer.